We're at Eric Connor's shop, SoCal Suspension. 869 wheel horsepower. Hitting those rev limiters or what? Yes, definitely. Do you even pay attention? I just go for it. What's up guys? Uh, Morgan Clark here. We're at Eric Connor's shop, SoCal Suspension, along with the Terra storefront in El Cajon. We're down here to check out his Black Baja Bug. Um, it's a new purchase for him and it's kind of a new member of the Terra Crew family. I've been doing some modifications on it and um, getting it to be suitable for his application. So we're gonna check it out. Hi Eric. Welcome. What's up, man? What's up, brother? How you doing? Good. Whoa, whoa. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Oh, oh. Okay. Rude. So Eric brought this thing to me. Let's go into, you know, what made you get this thing? When did you get it? You know, start there. So the short, quick story is, um, um, you know I have my Tundra, you've seen the Tundra and all that, and, but the bug, I bought a, I wanted a sand car, something I could do more sand oriented stuff. Yeah. Just dirt, just, you know, hard pack. So I've seen this car for about a year on social media. Um, I found finding finding stuff is hard to get a hold of people through social media. So I basically saw the guy, found who he was, friend requested him on Instagram. He didn't accept my friend request, of course. <laughs> but I uh, <laughs> look who's here. <laughs> so Blake's here. Yeah, Blake's here. Yeah. There is a party. I'm gonna go over some stuff later, but I felt like this was much more of a Blake thing because bugs are his life. Everybody kind of knows Wilkie for his bug endeavors. Buggy door What's up, by the way? It's a good life. <laughs> um, so if you saw his original bug, this is a real similar representation and kind of similar power to weight, center mount A-arm. Oh, yeah. You know, all the package on there. You've also ridden in it and um, yes. kind of got the bearings on it. He's driven it's fast. Yeah. yeah, and then when it comes back to talking about some of the modifications and some of the upgrades that I've helped Eric with, then I'll kind of shoot back and uh, be more involved. Heck cool? Yeah. Well, let's do this, Eric. Welcome. 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 Dude, the Thanks shop's looking coming. good, dude. You got so many bad mama jambas in here. Right, right. So, where'd you get this bug? All right, so we were just talking about that. So, I have friend requested to do it on Instagram because I've seen the bug. You know, it's one of those ghost things you see. You know, it's just little posts on different pages. But the dude uh, had a private account on Instagram and yeah. sent him a message, and he messaged me back, and so we started chatting for a couple days. So the power of social media, social media, which is what sold my bug, which has brought a lot of us together. And which is where you found this book. Correct. Correct. That's so sick. basically chatting with the guy for Love a little it. bit. And, uh, Love it. Three days later, I basically said, hey, would you consider selling it? Because yeah. I'm interested. And he said, no, you know, you never can get what you want, you know, trying to sell it. Yeah. And I said, hey, you know, I'm really interested if, you know, just maybe sleep on it and let me know. He said, I'll sleep on it. And, uh, he slept on it and let me come up and chat with him a little bit. Yeah. I convinced him let, let it go. Well, this motor ain't cheap back here. No. Let's start from the back. Okay. And let's work our way forward because this is where the goods are at. This is where the goods are. This is where the goods are at. So give me the rundown on this motor plant. I know we've spoken about it roughly, but yeah. this is your baby. Let's start off with horsepower. Horsepower, it is a CBM motor. It dynoed on their dyno. Ooh. It's 869 wheel horsepower. 869? 869. That's a good number. Good number. Good number. <laughs> <laughs> so big old Whipple. Big Whipple, 4.5 Whipple, which is a monster. Yes. That has a lot to do with how the, the power is. Oh, it she is barks. LS3, 
It's stroked out to a 427 cubic inch LS3, but the big Whipple, I think, just puts that power down. I talked to CBM about it. They mm. said you know, a lot of times they dyno stuff and you think, oh, you know, it's cool. But when they threw this thing on the dyno, everybody in CBM came out from under their desk and just was like, I've never yeah. heard anything like it. This thing screams. Oh, like, yeah. It it's loud. Like, when you have that kind of horsepower, transaxles are not cheap. I would say your next weak link. Um, however, you got a big bad dog, Mendiola. Yes, yep. You got the uh, S4? S4. Or the S4D? Yep. Boom! That's the S4S, uh, yeah. yeah. So that's not the D, but it, you know, it's you still... You have the bigger D bell housing, correct, on yours? Yes, so I have the Chevy bell housing, but these transmissions still have a very sizable ring and pinion. Correct. It's a sequential, so it's a four-speed. With that being said, these things are like 12 grand, 13 grand out the box. Right. Like, they are not cheap. Weight to horse power ratio on a lighter vehicle puts a little less stress on the trans correct? Absolutely. This this car you can you can see that a lot of it is thicker inch and a half uh curl molly. So being a buggy, being that it's lightweight, it doesn't have to be the inch and three quarter one twenty. It doesn't have to be the two inch yeah. one twenty mains. Um because there's so many aspects of this that are a much much lighter weight components, but it still has all the big internals. Correct. Which is nice because originally this thing was made more for for the sand, right? Yes. Exactly. But it has the components that are still capable of doing that. It's just not. It's not like you're going to Baja. You're not hitting these yeah. holes that are just um, sending Massive, crazy, crazy load through, through the hole. Through yeah. So I can see here that your axles have the big 934 right. um, CVs, um, all 12 point hardware, which is the good good. It doesn't really get much better than that. Um, you got the double boot up top, single boot down low. And uh, Jamar doing, Hubs. With the way he did these arms, doing that boot in there, a little worried about tight, you know, getting it in between there. On the outer. Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. all the Jamar Hubs front and rear, which I love. They're a great company to work with. Yeah, they make a quality product. Those methods, though. Yeah, methods. That red pops. I don't even know if this camera picks up how yeah, sexy that red is. Dang. <laughs> Big fans in the back. This is awesome. I like the, some of the modifications you made, which we'll get into later to, to get the air into that radiator because with the windshield, when you were running the windshield, yep. um, you had a, some of the heating issues, but it looks like that's definitely getting sorted out. Right? Getting sorted out. Yep. Big old heat exchanger in there. Boom. That's uh, mandatory for these superchargers. Um, King shocks. Adjustable coilovers with the clickers right here off yeah, the reservoir. Upgrade, went bigger on everything. Yeah. Want to size up on all the shocks. 3.0. 3.0 rear, 2.5 coilover. It used to be the you know a 2.5 with a 2.0 rear. Yeah. So everything went up a half size. That helps, and you can see some other modifications there that we'll we'll get into a little later. Limit straps mandatory. Otherwise, uh, might be busting some CVs out. Um, I've had the pleasure of driving this thing. It's still still a bug. I mean, yep. your seats are touching in the middle. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. that's, I like it though, because it makes you feel like you're in a cockpit. Like literally, the whole roof of this thing's line X, it looks I mean, like, is, this is the which is awesome. Here, we'll, we'll cross off a couple numbers right there, you know. <laughs> I think we already it's gave him the license it's plate. Legal. It's licensed, <laughs> you know, it's got insurance on it. Beautiful, everything's tight and packaged, really, really nice. Um, CNC brake, cylinders, masters up here and pedals. What's this little extension you got here, dude? No, that's because I'm short, so it gives me a little clutch throw. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So a sequential shifter, you just, to upshift, just bang it back. Downshift, bang it forward. You got your little reverse lever, and uh, this is new. Yeah, Have you got to play with the cutting brake yet? Just around the, around the town a little bit. You like it? I love it. Wait till you rotate with a cutting brake in the dunes. In the dunes, the cutting brake is so much fun. So these sequential transmissions, they are not locked rear diffs. Um, they have spider gears in there and they will divert power to the light tire if you do hike. I've actually been upside down a couple times because of it. Yeah. But um, with having that feature of a cutting brake and that, that differential, um, you're able to really slide the car and do 180s or quick turns and bowls or make evasive maneuvers, which is fun. And uh, when you flick the rear weight of these, though, you could also get yourself in trouble because there is so much rear weight. Yeah, so, yeah. And, you know, a lot of times you're light on those front tires. Yes. They, and you turn, they, it doesn't turn. Yes. So, so I mean, hitting bowls, hitting things, you want to be able to throw that turn around with that cutting brake. Oh, absolutely. Clean little steering wheel you got there, brother. Yeah, yeah. 
So you got your rugged radios, you got your boost gauge, everything else is on the AEM system yeah. for all your gauges. You got some warning lights. Do you have those warning lights set for, for when you're uh, hitting that, those rev limiters or what? Yes, definitely. Do you even pay attention? I just go for it. Yeah. <laughs> Once it stops making power and making a bunch of noise, yeah, just you just like chop it. Next gear. One thing that I see that's done right on these bugs is you have to gusset these. When you cut all the structure out of these out of these cars, you have to make sure you throw gussets to the chassis for the cab to keep these doors from uh, from flexing, yeah. so you can actually shut and open and close it. Um, that's a that's a big deal on these. Cage work looks nice and tight and right. Bunch of tubes coming down to support those rear shocks, which is awesome. Used to have a back seat back here, now it just looks like a cooler rack. Yeah, so I'm waiting. PRP is taking care of me on some seats, so they helped me go through uh, custom building seats. So we're gonna have a rear seat and two front seats, all fit in there, all PRP. So I like they're it. Taking care of it, so I'm stoked on that. I love on the door bar all the aluminum. Uh, some cars don't have that. This has that. It makes it look much more like a cockpit yeah. in there. How big's the fuel cell? Uh, 20 gallons. 20 gallon fuel it's cell? Just, just a little shy of what you need on a good day at Klamath, you know? Yep. If you're ripping, you do like swing set and back, you're pretty much empty by by the end of that. So you gotta. We've covered some ground out there. Yeah, we did I've, some long trips. I think we we're coming in on fumes for sure. I ran out of gas coming that way. <laughs> <laughs> What's the rear travel numbers? That I don't know. I Probably probably roughly. I want to cycle it, but I. 19, 20 ish? 18. 18? Okay. Morgan's coming through with some of those upgrades he'll go over with you guys. Um, originally, this car was set up really soft. Uh, we figured that out. I mean, everybody has a different driving style. Um, you see my driving style, it's aggressive. That's kind of what Eric was shooting for with this car, was um, to get aggressive with it and kind of do things that we do with the whole Terra crew at the events and all that stuff. So that's why he made some of the modifications uh, to this thing and went bigger on shocks. But let's check out this front end. So the track width looks very similar to the OG bug that I had. 88 inches is track width on this one. What's the wheelbase? About 109, 111? No, I think it's like 108, 109. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's right there. I'm, I'm 107 on Megalodon. My old car was a 109. Okay. We got the Howl power steering up there. It's a 2.5 rack yep. with uh, three quarter Himes, we're gonna have to get you some ZRP badass custom tie rods, yeah, dude. Those this boys thing will... is still a work in progress, and yeah, it'll get there eventually. But you've only had it for a couple months, yeah, it's, it's, you've it's, already done so much and had it out so much, and it's been it's been a reliable girl. Yeah, everything uh, you work through slowly, but it just you just touch everything, and then eventually you'll be finished, dude. They had the chrome domes in, in stock, or what? Yeah. I like it. You're gonna have to polish those rear ones up too, baby. So we're we're dealing with the center mount setup here, and what's really cool is the whole steering is attached all the way up to um, the bulkhead for the lower pivots, the upper pivots, and the shock mounts, which ties everything together very nicely. Um, all the panelings pretty pretty sealed off decently well to where I'm sure you're not getting much sand up in there yeah, unless you really deserve it, right? Yeah, we can hook that up to really get that sand from the over inside there. What, uh, what hubs are in the front? These are these two are O's? New. I just put these on uh, last week, so Jamar did the, their two O's. So gotcha. They used to have some something. The combo like, spindle? Yeah, combo spindle, so I just got rid of it and went all with Jamar. Dude, the two O's are big dogs. Yeah. Uh, those are kind of the standard for these Correct, yeah. these cars now. The combo spindles, I'm pretty sure we would have broken by now yeah. with the thrashing we've yeah. done. Well, she's beautiful. Um, I can't wait to drive her again. I've had a little bit of fun with her when we first got her dialed in. Uh, I can't believe you've kept her this clean for this long, but I mean, that's what your specialty is here. Yeah. Everything you have is meticulously clean. I know you guys made so many updates to this thing um, where Morgan really came through and, yeah. and helped finish this thing off to you and, and or make it to where it fits your driving style. It's gonna be able to do what you want. It's gonna help it cool and uh, make it look just rad so Morgan come show off this beautiful work you did to this thing sir we ran through the car now it's your turn okay thanks guys all right well Eric's a deadline guy um, he hit me up to do some upgrades obviously it's a it's a new purchase for him so getting things right and making things sorted the way you sorted, want them. Correct, yeah. yeah sorted's the good word yeah um, he wants to take this thing in the dirt and the street, not just the sand. So, yeah. Um, first thing was the sway bar for the rear and the cooling. Right. And then we 
finalized getting the sway bar on the front as well. So I think that having a front sway bar is going to be a night and day situation, especially for handling on the street. Correct. I want, I want or, it to be predictable. Yeah. Wow. So um, the cooling, Eric had a problem just because the windshield's in. Well, it's not in right now, but the windshield, he likes to run with the windshield yeah, I like, in. I want to run the windshield in. The radiator and the intercooler are all in this pocket here. You can see there's previous tin work uh, with the fans there. And then if you go in there, that's what you get right there. And the intercooler is directly in front of the radiator, so it just creates a little bit of uh, heat saturation in there. You get this for airflow through the window scoops. Which really doesn't work much. <laughs> yeah. But they look cool. Yeah. Our solution and Eric's idea was to not have uh, so much of a, a scoop profile where the whole profile of the bug is affected by you know a big scoop, which I don't mind those either, but for yeah. your preference. Yeah, I just that, like the lines of a bug. I want to keep the lines the best. Yep, yeah, so that's what we started with up here. Uh, the reason there's two of these guys is just because of functionality, because that tube in the cage is right there. So that just dictated the design right off the bat. Those are the big scoops for him, or ducting, I guess, if you will. Yep. It did cut down in heat, right? After you did that, I ran the windshield in Glamis for two days, and it never went over 190. Um, but we went on a long run. Me and Blake went swing set and back. And I think at the end of that run, it was a, a, literally a three hour run. Yeah. It started creeping in temperature, so I yanked the window out just in case. I didn't want to have any issues. But yeah, you definitely take care of it. We're about 95% there. Uh, we also did these cutouts in here. So this was all a previous kind of wing box here. But just to let some air flow better in here, I just made these cutouts with stainless mesh. That was job one. Job two was rear sway bar. Just to package things better, Eric got a bigger shock. He got a three inch bypass and a newer coilover. Redid the shock mounts, front and rear. Took the arms, had them sandblasted, re-welded all the areas that look kind of questionable, and then added the sway bar. The sway bar's a pretty short guy. I think it's seven inches center to center. Um, and just tabbed it, did all the linkage. The bar is a 49 inch wide bar, inch and a half, 35 spline. The other thing when we were in here, is all the chassis. I just figured while we're in the hot spot of each corner of the rear of the car to kind of get the gussets in here. So there's um, eighth inch chromoly gussets all kind of in all the junctions that I could get to. So there's one going from the transaxle in here um, to the outside. Then there's all these exterior gussets on tangent. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then obviously there's a big structure for the sway bar here that's fully boxed on both sides. While we're back here, the air filters just kind of needed to be squared up. So I just put new brackets on. I had to complement them the best per side that they could be. The front's got a similar situation. Eric talked about redoing the front arms completely. I think we kind of managed to salvage the lower arm and re-weld what we could and then do new shock mounts, sway bar tabs, and add a limit strap to the front. This front didn't have a limit strap. Um, the other thing too is we're gonna redo the upper arm. So next time you see the car, it'll have a fully fabricated upper arm, all plate, TIG welded chromoly. The front sway bar is a similar situation. It's all boxed and plated in here. This is just a mock-up tube, so it's just clamped to a tube just to kind of show you guys the functionality of it. Once the bar comes in, it's a custom made 25 inch bar, three quarter by 35 spline. And then these guys are 10 inches uh, on center. So this should make a real big difference in the handling. Yes. Aesthetics wise, uh, this is the biggest ticket here are the door panels. One, two, three, four, five, six pieces together there, blended. Just tried to keep the styling of the bug. If you kind of just look at all the lines. You can see that those are a representation of just what's going on with the exterior. So that's a passenger and driver door. And then we also have door sills, which kind of capture the bottom of the car. And they just seal the thing up. There was just kind of a void there. You could see there's kind of that factory um, coating on the chassis. So that's just sealed up. These are fully removable. And then the last, part there was these trim pieces inside. So there was also a void from the, the door and the, the cab there to the paneling on the chassis. So we just have these trim pieces going in there to fill that. 
and it keeps all the air out and the sand out and all the elements out. Well, that's that. Beautiful. Definitely. You did a damn good job. <laughs> <laughs> like those door panels, they're, they're not easy. A lot of this stuff that you did in this car aren't easy, but you make it look easy, dude. And we did it in two weeks. Yeah. That's everything. Eric's a deadline guy, so and, that's not my style. And that was, that was just round one. There's going to be round two, yeah. maybe even round three to get this bug right. Yeah, we just, you know, all of us as a team want to support Eric and have the car sorted and just have it optimal for being able to take it not just on the street or in the sand, but in the desert. And the desert's a lot more harsh than anything else. Yeah, be safe. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Be safe and be able to feel confident in what you got. You know? when, I, I suggest anytime you buy something like this from a previous owner, you got to sort, go through everything. Sure. You'll find so many things. So sort it all out and get it right and get it to where you want it. And Safety never takes a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the stuff is preventative maintenance that we can identify right off the bat and then there's also going to be another chapter of this thing where there might be some things that fail when we're out there. Yeah, it happens. And that's just, part of the game. you know, yeah, it's part of the game. Yeah, that's right. all it is. Yeah. Build to destroy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, Eric, uh, congratulations yeah. on your car. Thank you. You know, I'm glad I could have a part in it. You know, and I'm glad it's part of the crew now. Thanks for having us down here. Yeah, bad times. Like and subscribe. Is it on? Yeah, it's on. Okay. What's up, guys? Morgan Clark here. Uh, we're at Sasok. Uh, we're just going to go over things and go over it and stuff. So yeah, I'll just cut that out. All right.